that we're blessed. We have to see something tangible in order to see that we're blessed. We got to have a lot of money in our pockets and our bank account to see that we're blessed. But if he woke you up this morning, you are
I'm gonna y'all know my God is awesome. He can move mountains. He keeps sitting there and hides me from the right. Hallelujah.
turn with me to cap first John chapter three, verses sixteen through eight. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso hath this world's good and seeth the brother have need and share it up his bow, shut it up his bowels of compassion from him. How dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us love not in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. The title of the message is Actions. <laughs> Every every week, every whenever time for me to come up before people, either on Thursday or all through the week, I do confirmation of the word. Pastor touched on a, a lot of my message for today, as well as Devin when she gave us short talk. So I just thank God for hearing and not leaning into my own understanding, and knowing that it's Him that's speaking through me. In First John three sixteen, God loved us so much that He gave His only begotten Son for us. That's true love. Amen. He gave him to us so that we wouldn't perish and so that we, we would have everlasting life. A lot of times people always commit with their mouths but they don't commit with their hearts. Right. They say they love you but their actions speak another word. It, it speaks louder. As far as giving, you know, people give, like she said, you give, a lot of people give to receive. Give because God said give. God gave us his son. There's no greater gift than giving. Giving is, is a form is one of the highest form of praising. Not just in money, it's of your time, of your service, of everything. Give, give because God says that. Turn with me to Matthew 25 and 40. You have it? Amen. Okay, I'm getting to it now. Hold up. All right. And the king shall answer, and he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, in so much as you have done to the least of my people, to the least of my brethren, yet you have done it unto me. So whenever you give, think of it as you're giving unto God. Because he's watching you. You know, we, we often say, you know, I'm not giving them nothing. I don't know what they're going to do with my, with, with my money. I'm not going to give them this or give them that. It doesn't matter what you think they're going to do with it. It says right here in the word of Matthew 25 and 40, whatever you've done for the least of my people. You know, God has is, is, is placed on all people's part to do good, but you have a choice. You have, he gives you free will. You can choose the blessing or the curse. It's up to you which way you'll go. But give it when you don't have it to give. That's really a thing. You can have the last $40 in your pocket and God tell it to give it to somebody. What are you going to do when you get them? You're going to give it or you're going to say, well, I'll give them half of it. <laughs> Go ahead and give it all because what you're doing secret, God will reward you openly for it. Give because it's the right thing to do, even when it hurts. As long as you keep, if you keep your hands closed, how can you allow God to put anything in it? Right. This is tax season. God, I hear you. This is tax season. <laughs> When everybody get their big lump sum, you'll put $10 in church instead of giving you 10%. But that's in three months when you don't have any money left. I need to go to church, my life's cut off. Okay, if you don't store up your treasures in heaven and you can feed into the word of God and do what he tells you to do, how can you expect to get anything else? But you can go on an $800 shopping spree, but you can't put the $800 and 10% in church. That's the word of God. He says, text me in this. Nowhere else in the Bible does he say that. So I, I just, I just want to see how long will it take for people to get what God is telling you before you suffer a great, a great grief. Before you can say, okay, God, I hear you. What is it gonna take? Are you gonna get paid every two weeks? And as soon as you get a job, I promise when I get this job, I'ma pay my tithes. The first check you get, you pay at the second. How last year? I gotta get these new shoes. I need some this. I need that. I gotta pay my car no. That's not the word. Mm -hmm. Store up your treasures. You have to put put into the church. When you need something, you have something to fall back on. How can we pay your bills if, if it's only four people in the church paying their tithes? Right. But you need, oh, the church ain't going to even help me, and that's not what it's all about. He says that we're supposed to help all, whatever you've done for the least of my people. But be considerate of what you give. Right. What you put out is what you get back. You reap what you sow. All right. Yeah. 
Show love by the way you act and treat others. We say we love, but out of the same breath, or even in the same sentence, we cursing each other out, calling each other names, and then you want to apologize. Do you apologize because it's the right thing to do or to make that person feel good? Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. We as Christians have to pay more attention to things that go on in life to pay attention to the signs and the wonders. Yeah. We just because we live in the world don't mean that we're other. Right. We have to love the way God loved us. We have to lay down our lives daily. Laying down your life don't mean you have to run it hit stand in front of a, a bus to get hit. It means that whatever your fleshly ways were, if it's gonna help somebody else, that means you just stop doing it to let them right. see that God is working through you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Allow God to use you in every circumstance of your life. Don't commit with your mouth, commit with your heart. Don't say I'm here for you, Pastor, and I'm here with you all the way. But the minute she goes up before to go speak at another church, or she asks people to come to Bible study or come to Bible, uh, choir rehearsal, you're not here. But the minute you're going through, please pray for me. Pray for her as well. Because she has a, a heart for each and every one of us. Because if it hadn't been for her us through me and my family, I don't know what we'll be. Commit with your heart and not just with your mouth. Go to her sometime and say, just because, thank you. Buy a happy meal. Buy a one thing. <laughs> just because. Because she goes, she gets, she'll give you the shirt off of her back. Everybody wants to run to her when they need something. But when she's in need, if she's at home behind, behind closed doors crying, where's everybody else? Do y'all call her to say, I'm just calling to check on y'all. You call and say, oh, my heart broke down. I don't have no gas. <laughs> what are you calling for? <laughs> When she asks y'all to go, just go. Commit with your heart. And if you really don't want to commit, which you mean you're not even committing to God. Submit and surrender. If you want things to go right in your life, do the right things. It don't, it's not that hard. If I can change anybody, can change. What he did for me, he can do it for you too. Yeah. Right. Trust in the Lord, lean not into your own understanding. He says it's all through the Bible. Everything that you say and do is a reflection of God. When you just because you're going somewhere and you're doing things behind closed doors, God has an open window. He still can see everything you're doing. So if you say you're going to do something, just commit to it. I'm, I'm trusting and believing that God is speaking to y'all and that y'all are here and that today will be the first day of the rest of your lives and you'll make a difference. Amen. You will say if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. It's time for us to stand united because we're falling away. We have a church full of young people. Each and every one of you have been called by God to do something that's not by mistake that you all are here. Right. Be used by God. I'd rather be used by God than be a puppet for the devil oh, yeah, any day. Yeah, 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 yeah. God didn't create you to be drunk or full of sin or full of mess, but he gave you an option. That's right. He gave you options. I'd rather wake up in heaven than to make my bed in hell any day. Doesn't mean that he doesn't love you. He said, because whether you make your bed in heaven or in hell, I'm there with you. But he gave you a choice. So when it when the light's out and you feel like you're going down, I pray to God it's not too late for you to repent and say, God, I'm sorry. But why wait till the last minute to remit, repent when he wakes you up every morning with another day to get it right? Some people didn't wake up this morning. A lot of people don't. But if you have the means and if you can make it to work on time every morning or you can get a ride to church, you can get a ride to Bible study, you can get to walk ride to place. You're not that tired. You're not that sick. If you got gas to get up and go to work the next morning, you can trust God to get the, the choir rehearsal and make it on time. Right. Trust in the Lord. What does saying I love you mean to you? Is it just a word? Or is it an action? What does saying I love you mean to you? Do you just love with your actions or are you loving with your mouth? Out of, like I said, out of the same breath, you're cursing each other, calling each other names, and then you want to apologize. But that heart, the heart is just deceitful above all things, and God knows the heart. God is not, God is not a God of not forgiving. He forgives you if you can go repent to him, but you have to repent and sin no more. <laughs> Don't just repent while you're here, and then when you leave out, you go and do the exact same things over and over. But you want to say, God, I love you. You're showing them just how much I love you by not keeping his commands. Would you rather deny your flesh daily and please God, or to keep satisfying self, knowing that 
if something happens, one wrong sip, you can have one foot on a banana peel and one on the grave, you could be going to hell. There's too many of us in here that are not doing the right things. I'm not perfect, but I strive to be better each and every day. I want my light to shine to inspire other people to do the right thing. It's not by my own account that I'm here because I could be sitting on that front row and never get up here. And I'll be all right with that. But God has called me to do something. And I trust that he knows what he's doing. God is good. We have a perfect example to follow by, and that's Jesus Christ. Jesus suffered death, hell, and the grave for us. And we have the audacity to complain about what we don't have or we're hurting and everything. Look what he suffered on the cross for us. How can we dare complain about anything? That's a perfect example to follow by. He loved us so much that he laid down his life for us. Only to live again because he is alive and God gave us hope because he lives on the east eat them inside of each and every one. <laughs> Are we going to continue to break, grieve the Holy Spirit? When you know you're doing, when that's something that's telling you that's not right, that's the Holy Spirit speaking on the inside of you. When you know you're going on a straight now and you decide you want to be to the left, <coughs> about that cold a second, you end up turning right back around. Count it out joy for your trials and tribulations because you only gave me your testimony. The harder the struggle is, the stronger you're going to be. Those are ways building your muscles up to be stronger, to be a better you, because that's all you can do is be the best, best you that you can be. But take the opportunity to thank God for giving you the opportunity to wake up, to breathe out, to pick up the phone and say, I love you. Mean it when you say it. Don't just say it because you think it's the right thing to do. Say it because you really mean it. But actions do speak louder than words. Commit yourself to the things of God. Do what God is telling you to do. You hear it. If you can go out and, and ball out and go, turn up, turn up for Jesus. Amen. Turn up for Jesus. Do what he's telling you to do and quit being rebellious youngsters, rebellious Christians, and just do it. If somebody's calling you on a Wednesday night, you know you got to be a choir rehearsal. That's the enemy using them to pull you away from choir rehearsal. If you know on Thursday night, it's Bible study night, and you ever go get drunk, or somebody calls you on my show coming on, that's the work of the enemy. Are you going to keep serving the devil, or are you going to praise God? Amen. Sunday morning, church started at 11.30. We give you 15 minutes, 11.45 to get in and consecrate. By 11.50, we should walk in at 12, 12.30. Oh, I just want to hear the word. Half the time, you don't want to hear the word. You just want to hear say, what are we here? What are we doing at the mind? God is not asleep. He looks up. He, he sits up high and he looks down low. He sees each and everything that each one of us is doing. Do y'all? If, if Jesus was to return today and come down out of the clouds, I would hope each and every one of y'all want to be going to heaven and not hell. So whatever you're not doing, that's not pleasing to God. He wants you to know it's time to get it right. The time is near. I know people have been saying that forever, but look at the signs and the wonders. God, God is warning us. He gives us warning before destruction. Nothing happens by mistake. You'll lose things. You'll lose people. Sometimes he remove things out of your life so that you can see that it's him. I control each and everything. So quit saying with your mouth and commit with your heart. If you're going to be about my business, do what I'm telling you to do and quit just talking about it because you have, that's what, what you call a, um, a spirit of, um, it's called uh, a religious spirit. You want to be religious around people because it sounds good. Oh, because I'm praising God. But when soon as you leave out, you're cursing everybody out. You're doing everything that's not godly, but you love God. He said blessing and cursing shouldn't come out the same mouth, so why you keep doing it? Go on a fast. If it's going to help you, that's what I had to do to stop cursing. I had to fast. Because every word that came out of my mouth was a curse when it didn't even make sense. It was stupid. And when I hear people curse, now that's how I feel. It makes me sick to my stomach. So God knows what we go through. He allows us to go through things so he can bring us out. Thank him for each trial and tribulation. Be the best, be the, be the best you that you can be. Allow God to use you in every circumstance, wherever you go, on your job, in the store, anywhere, anything. Allow God to use you. And I just trust that something is said or done that's going to bring you one step a little closer so that you can do what God wants you to do. Each and every one of you are leaders. Don't be a follower. If somebody's leading you down the wrong way, 
You better run, because they're going to they're gonna take you straight to hell with them. And I'd rather not. I'd rather not have no friends and go to heaven than to have a busload of friends going to hell. The male and marriage all time, I get myself together. I'm trying to fill up the buses. I want to take everybody with me. I know people get tired of me saying what I'm saying. I don't care. I could kill it. I'm trying to fill up the buses. I'm trying to get to heaven, and I'm trying to take as many people as I can with me. All right. All right. And I just pray that I said something. Oh, God has moved in me to move through y'all that, that you learn to commit your ways unto God. Amen. Submit to God and surrender and the devil have to flee. Amen. Actions speak louder than words. That's the message for today. I pray that something is good for us. Amen. Amen. Action speak louder than words. Yeah, let's show Minister to get back to some more love for that word. Action speaks louder than words. How many of you can do things? And you're only doing it for show. You only uh if you don't really mean it in your heart. You find yourself in that position. You know, it's like, well, I'm I'm just doing it because it's it's supposed to be the right thing to do. But God knows our intentions, He knows our motives, He knows exactly. You can say whatever you want to with your mouth, make it look whatever, however you want it to look, but God knows exactly why you're doing what you're doing. A lot of people do things out of manipulation, because they want to manipulate others to be and do whatever they're doing. They'll say those sly remarks to try to make you feel guilty about doing the right thing. They'll make fun of you for doing the right thing so that you can turn away from it. You can laugh all you want to, I say, but me and God don't get the last laugh. And I would hate for him to come back for me. And I and he say to me, depart from me, you work of iniquity. I never do you. I want to hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Because we don't know when our last day is. People are leaving this earth right, left and right. You hear about celebrities all about them. They're just dying. They're young. Uh, uh, right while they're in their prime, God is taking them on out of here.
try. And every time I try to do good, evil is always present with me. You don't know what I face when I get home. You don't know what I'm going through when I get home.